Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Freedom Fest Court is now in session for this important trial of our beliefs. Judge Jeffrey Verdon is presiding at this hearing. All rise for the judge. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, we are gathered here in the great sovereign state of Nevada to decide the fate of public unions in America. In this hearing, we hope to discover if the benefits the public and the taxpayers to have our civil servants at the federal, state, and municipal level join a union. Do unions serve the public interest or are they nuisance that we cannot afford and should be abolished? Before this court, the prosecution will attempt to show the public sector unions in our schools, fire, police departments, the post office, and other municipalities have become an unelected special interest group that are overpaid and abusing public retirement funds, threatening strikes, slowdowns, and even violence, and through political lobbying, raising the burden of taxes and excessive spending on an American public during times of economic stress and high unemployment. We have brought before this court Thea Lee, Deputy Chief of Staff, Policy Director, and Chief International Economist of the AFL-CIO the premier organization representing labor groups, both public and private, throughout the United States. Ms. Lee, would you please stand? You and your union supporters have been accused of taking advantage of the public treasury, being paid too much, taking advantage of pension funds, threatening to disrupt the general welfare of the country, and through lobbying, raising the burden of taxes and public debt during a time when the American people are suffering from unemployment, heavy taxes, and stress. How do you and your supporters plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. We will begin the proceeding with a five-minute opening statement, first by the prosecuting attorney, Steve Moore. Now, Mr. Moore is a distinguished member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board and author of many books, including How Barack Obama is Bankrupt in the U.S. Economy, and several co-authored with Arthur Laffer, The End of Prosperity, Return to Prosperity, How America Can Rein in Economic Superpower Status. He is a strong advocate of the flat tax, social security privatization, free trade. He is considered one of the premier supply side economists in the United States. Now after opening statements, each attorney will call two witnesses who will be subject to cross-examination. Then, each side will make closing statements. Afterwards, the jury will rule on the case. And if the defendants are found guilty, I will impose the judgment. You will listen carefully to the opening statements and the witnesses, and at the end of the hearing, you'll be required to determine whether there is sufficient evidence beyond a reasonable doubt and that Ms. Lee and her, follower, and her union followers are responsible for public malfeasance is that understood, jury? Mr. Moore, you may begin your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you very much for being here. When I read the, uh, the title of this trial, Public Unions, Are They Good or Bad for America? I thought this must be a trick question. I think there's no question you will find that the evidence shows that public employee unions are very bad for the U.S. economy, and I, I think that we will show you in the next 45 minutes to, hour, uh, to an hour that, they, that the unions are guilty. I'm going to need a bench to rule from, so I'm going to have to ask you to step over here. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, we will show the prosecution that public employee unions are guilty of three charges. Number one, public employee unions have become a scourge on our U.S. economy and are making us poorer as a result. Number two, public employee unions are responsible for the bankrupting of virtually every state and local government in America. 
Number three, from Albany to Santa Order in the court, please. Chicago. Number three, public employee unions are guilty of causing one of the most greatest income inequality injustices in American history. The injustice and the inequality is the inequality of pay between what public employee unions receive and private sector workers that are comparably skilled. And you, we will provide evidence for you that shows that the average private sector worker in America receives only half of what a public sector employee unions get. We hear from liberals all the time that there is injustice and unfairness in America, and I would make the case to you, ladies and gentlemen, and I think we will show you the evidence that the greatest injustice and greatest unfairness is this disparity in incomes between what the public sector unions receive and the private sector unions. And that is something that is causing higher taxes on all of us. Now, uh, if you look, I made a, had an article in the Wall Street Journal about a month ago that was called Makers versus Takers, and I think it, it really exemplifies what is wrong in America with the growth of the power and the size of the unions in America. And let me just give you one statistic to document how public sector employee unions are taking over America. If you go back to 1965, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will find that in America there were twice as many manufacturing workers in America as there were public sector union employees in the United States. By 1995, there were exactly the same number of public employee unions uh, members as there were manufacturers. Today in America, and this is a sad commentary of what has happened to our economy, there are twice as many government workers today as there are manufacturers. There are twice as many takers in the American economy as makers, and ladies and gentlemen, that is a trend that is simply unsustainable in America today. One last point I would like to make is that I, we have not talked yet about the real evil empire of the U.S. economy, and I think you all know who I am talking about. The the teachers' unions in America are ruining our schools, they are bankrupting our schools, and we have got to do something about freeing the kids from the, from the, uh, from the public teachers' unions in America. Uh, one example of the injustice that pu public teacher unions uh, impose on our economy. Today, in states like Ohio, just take one example, they have a policy called retire and rehire. A worker, at the, uh, a teacher at the age of 53, 54, or 5 uh, can re earn a salary of 100000 retire from that job with a $100,000 a year pension, and then, ladies and gentlemen, get rehired for that same job at the old salary, taking home 200000 Nobody in the private sector gets that kind of deal, and that's the kind of things that is taking away money from the classroom so we have better schools in America. And so I think in some, ladies and gentlemen, you will find by the end of this hour that the public sector employees are guilty as charged, and the American economy and, the, and every state and local government and the federal government would be much more fiscally healthy if we did not have public employee unions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Counselor. Please, no applause. There will be order in this court. This is a courtroom, and I expect to have order in my courtroom. Now, thank you, Counselor. Thea Lee, we'll now, we'll now hear from Thea Lee. She is a Deputy Chief of Staff Policy Director and Chief International Economist at the AFL-CIO. She earned her bachelor's degree from Smith College and a master's degree in economics from the University of Michigan. Ms. Lee is co-author of A Field Guide to the Global Economy. She is an expert on the North American Free Trade Agreement, international trade, wage inequality, and the steel and textile industries. She's appeared on numerous national television and radio shows. She is also on the board of directors of Worker Rights Consortium, United for the Fair Economy, and the National Bureau of Economic Research. Ms. Lee, will you give your opening statement, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the jury and assembled audience. I submit to you that the charges against my client, the public unions of America, and the hardworking men and women who belong to them are utterly baseless and should be thrown out of this court. The prosecution's case is founded on shoddy statistics, isolated and unrepresentative anecdotal evidence, and a false premise. Moreover, I will demonstrate beyond a reasonable doubt that my client has been unfairly scapegoated and is being blamed for crimes that were in fact committed by another party 
entirely. The prosecution is well aware of this fact, and I submit to you